What is going on everybody? This is the Fresh Baked Goods and thank you for clicking on another Hell at Loose video. Last week we got our first look at Hell at Loose patch 14.5 with the PTE going live for a day. And there are some big old gameplay changes that are coming our way. So I thought it was really important what I show you guys Hell at Loose has in store for us on this next update. Because if you're like me, you're feeling a little bit down with patch 14.4 and all the issues uh, that patch brought. So it's nice to be hopeful again about the future of this game. But yeah, I did jump in the PTE. I played it for hours. I got a good look at what was going on. And I can safely say I am pretty amped on what is coming this next patch. Now, before we jump into the details, it is very important to note that there is a long list of known issues, uh, unfinished items, and bugs that the devs are already very aware of. I'll put the link to the dev blog in the description of this video, so please go check it out. But yeah, this is not a finished update by any means. And also, I'm not gonna sit here and talk about how the performance was and everything, because that can change a lot when this patch releases. It makes no, it makes no sense to talk about it right now uh, on these PTE servers. So let's break it down. What is new with patch 14.5? Well, the biggest thing is the introduction of sub factions. And for this patch, it's specifically for the LL main map with the British getting the British 8th Army and the Axis getting the German Africa Corps. Now, what this means is these two sub factions will have map specific uniforms for LL main. They'll have specific loadouts for LL main specific tanks for LL main. And overall, this is a fantastic idea. It played very well in the PTE because you have factions like the German Afri Corps that now lose the ability to have Gewehrs and STGs on their side. And now overall, the matches in Elemain will have a higher focus on bolt action. Uh, obviously, there'll be SMGs in there as well, but the majority of roles will now be limited to bolt action or at least have a focus on it, which is so cool to see. Because not only does it balance these two factions a little more on this map, but it just makes the game a lot more fun to play. And I think that's most important. The actual uniforms themselves, they look fine. I think they're great, especially the British wearing those short shorts. Let me tell you, it is peak hell at loose to have a squad of these British dudes in short shorts running around with Thompsons and drum mags, just wrecking shop like this little awesome fashionable murder squad. Just overall, the new uniforms, the sub factions, the specific loadouts is a lot more immersive. It really works well. So I am so pumped to see that and I cannot wait till they expand this to more maps because I think it is absolutely the right way to go forward with this game after playing this. So the British did get a few new weapons. Most importantly, they got the SMLE number one Mark III and this gun felt and sounded great. It sounds like a freaking cannon and it felt pretty good too, even though despite it's not zero to 100 uh, meters yet, according to the known issues. But I was hitting shots pretty well with it. It felt like a really, really even matchup to the Car 98. And this is something that the British have been missing for a very long time. So yeah, I, we're getting this in both uh, LL Main and Drial for the British faction. So that is awesome. It felt like it was cycling fine. It felt fast. I was able to hit shots at a distance and it sounded great as well. And that's all you can really ask for. The Bren now has a bipod, which is awesome. Let's be honest, going against MG42s on a map like El Al Main is not great. So the British need all the help they can get and giving uh, the option of having a Bren with a bipod is fantastic. Whatever helps them get the balance correctly. The gun itself felt like it was shooting a little high for me. That may be a skill issue on my end, who knows, but it is definitely a step in the right direction. Do I think it's going to be anywhere as good as the MG42? Absolutely not. But like I said, the just the ability to have this gun, I think is the right way to go. But the British did get a huge boost with the addition of the Thompson and the drum mag on it. Dude, this gun absolutely shreds. Not only does it have that drum mag with tons of ammunition in it, this gun is deadly accurate from long ranges. I was getting headshots from 100, 200 meters, absolutely no problem at all. Then on top of that, when you're clearing uh, strong points and, and trenches and runes and stuff, it is so easy to run in there and just wipe a squad because you never have to reload. You just hold it down and you just run in there guns blazing. So there is a slight chance this might be a little overpowered, but I don't want to say that yet until this patch comes out and we see how it competes in the overall scheme of things against the MG42s uh, and, and whatnot on a full server going. Because I don't think it's going to be so much overpowered that they need to jump on it right away. I think it's a wait and see situation, but the British absolutely need something like this to get going. I think a lot of players are going to have fun with this gun. Uh, and I will say right now, the Assault Level 9 with the satchel in this gun is rivaling the STG loadout for me for the Germans as far as best kit in the game. 
And now the British are getting a new tank on LMA and they are getting the Churchill Mark III. So I'll say right now, this tank is probably the worst part of the PT, but that's only because it is nowhere near done yet. Uh, they state that many times in the known issues, all these things are just not finished. The mobility is terrible, they acknowledge that. The reload speed in the PTE has the medium tank reload speed. I'm sure that'll be fixed, there's no way we can go through this again. And it has some hitbox issues with the tracks doing hole damage from the front. And as well as the mud flaps on the back doing hole damage. So there's, there's some things wrong with it currently. So I didn't play a full match in this, if I'm being honest. I did drive it around, I did fire it a little bit, and it's awful. But that being said, I'm not going to judge it right now because this is the PTE. They do know there's things wrong with it. And I did on my end get confirmation uh, from some people pretty directly from the source that this tank will be almost completely different feeling once it comes out full release. They know the issues. They're going to fix them. That said, this tank does look sick as it is. It is great to have something that's not a firefly. It's low profile. It's going to be really fun to get into some nice hold down positions. And I have to think with the wording and the known issues, they make a comment about how the mobility is worse than a Tiger. I have to think with that wording that this thing will drive like a Tiger when it comes out. And if that's the case, fantastic. The British are in desperate need of a heavy tank that's actually effective and fun to use. So having this in place of the Firefly, if it's fun, if it's effective, we're going to be in a very good spot. Uh, do I think it's going to balance everything? Maybe not, because the Germans still have the ability to send two heavy tanks out much faster than uh, the, the British do to have send one heavy tank out. But we'll have to wait and see how this plays out balance-wise, but I think this tank is going to be a step in the right direction. It's going to be better than the Firefly on full release. And then obviously the last big thing as far as content going is the new Dust variant of LL Main. This wasn't the previous PTE, but this was 100% the focus of this PTE. If you think the Dusk uh, version of LL Main is going to solve all the problems you have on the normal version of it, eh, not so much. You're still going to be getting pegged from uh, MGs from long ranges, and tanks are still going to destroy you on this map no matter what. That said, it is a little bit easier to get around and traverse the map. Instead of getting shot from 800 meters away, you're only going to get shot from like 200 meters away. And it does look really nice, but I had a blast playing infantry on it, even with tanks on the field, uh, when there was about 80 to 90 people in the PTE server. And I, I can't really say that about normal LL main. So the fact that I'm able to play this infantry on this map and have fun is a good sign. And that's really it for the major changes coming in patch 14.5. Um, like I said, make sure to check out the dev blog. Huge list of known issues. I know nothing's really mentioned here, but fingers crossed that patch 14.5 does something in the way to affect uh, performance because patch 14.4 honestly has made this game very hard to play for me. I don't know if, you, if you're a fan of this channel. I've kind of slowed down uploads. I'll tell you right now, guys, it's patch 14.4. I'm getting tons of crashes. I have to reset my settings every time I upload. Uh, every time I load into the game, uh, VoIP is just the worst it's ever been for me. Uh, the stutters are back a little bit worse than they were for me before 14.4. Uh, so performance has been really not great for me since this last patch. So fingers crossed. Uh, that patch 14.5 solves a lot of these issues because I am struggling out here. But yeah, as far as the content goes, this update, this patch, whatever you want to call it, is looking very good. Sub factions, great. British felt fun to play. Churchill shaping up to be a good tank. This is all good stuff. And as far as content goes, so we're looking pretty good here. And if they can do this uh, for the rest of the factions in the game, you know, change the focus of each map to different loadouts uh, and, and whatnot. This game could be fun. Imagine doing what they're doing with these sub factions here and do it to the Russians. So the Russian maps now have a focus on bolt action rifles and certain tanks are limited. It can be really fun. So I'm hoping that this all works. I'm hoping that if it does work, we see more of it in the future because this is all good news. And I know I gripe on this game a lot when things go wrong, but I have to give credit where credit is due. If they can nail this when this patch comes out, this will be a really good one. I think one of the most important patches of the year. But yeah, if you got a chance to try the PT or you want to let me know what you're looking forward to, let me know down in the comments. But thank you for watching. Thank you for everything you do. I'll see you dudes on the front line.